one specific longing that I had was a professional nature. And I aspired to uh, actually become a principal of a school and, and um, actually pursued my certification and even had some interviews, but the timing just didn't seem right. And uh, so that was a longing that I kind of released. A time in my life where I felt extreme longing um, and pretty emptiness uh, was in, I guess, the beginning of high school. Um, when I had just become a Christian, uh, but I didn't have any community surrounding me. I didn't have many girls my age uh, that were also wanting the same things as me or um, wanting to follow the Lord in the same way. Uh, so I felt like I was kind of alone um, and that made me feel really um, obviously alone and empty. I think it was right when I turned 16 and my parents just got divorced. Um, coming from a solid base relationship family to knowing that my parents are going to be separated. I was totally like, all right, what's going to happen? What's next? One of the hardest seasons of my life was when my dad passed. I was a junior in college. He died in a car accident while I was studying abroad. And um, that was especially difficult because when he passed, I didn't know if he was a Christian or not. I didn't know if he had a personal relationship with Jesus. I questioned God about my mother's life, why he put her through the things he put her through, why he put my family through the things he put me through. I thought that that was God's plan for me. Get married, find this person, have my own family. And when I saw that plan breaking, I got disappointed not with myself and with God and losing my faith because I thought like, why you made me go through this moment when I was feeling happy, when I thought I was having everything and then suddenly you just take all that away from me. I, I, you know, there were street gangs and I was a little guy and, and uh, you know, got knocked around and um, it was, um, yeah, it was definitely the, that feeling of looking for meaning and, and, and safety and security and... Yeah, right after college, um, all of my friends from school were getting married and I was not getting married and I felt like, what's wrong with me? Like, why am I not matched up with somebody? That was a time of longing. I, I questioned if he actually truly loved me, then why would he put me through these things? That's when I kind of stumbled upon this phrase, I think it's in Ephesians, where it says that Christ is our all in all. And I was like, well, he's gonna be my all in all. He's, he's gonna fill that gap, that feeling of loneliness. No matter how tough life is on a daily basis, uh, no matter the struggle that we're going through in the family, I think for me, the kingdom of God is more the, the hope that he brought, that we're living in, but is yet to be completed. So for me, the longing of, oh, we might see something greater at the end. The kingdom is yet is here already, but yet to, to be fulfilled. So for me, this, it's that hope that makes me keep on going. Every time that I remember that Jesus went through certain situations, even worse situations than the ones that I'm going, it gave me hope that I, I can feel better, that I can continue moving forward. I definitely think Jesus longs for us. In the recent a uh, couple of talks about Peter when it was him walking on water. I think Jesus longed for Peter's faith to be shown in, in a physical, tangible way. And I think that um, he absolutely longs for us to draw near to him as we are trying to draw. It's like a, a mutual drawing. And I, I mean, we wouldn't be in the position we were as receiving Jesus if he wasn't first longing for us especially when I'm feeling anxious or upset or lonely or sad. I'll just think about myself sitting in a room with Jesus, just like right across from him, kind of like how, never mind, <laughs> kind of like how we are now. Um, and I just feel him sitting with me and his presence is there with me and he's looking at me 
um, and recognizing me as a person. And he's like looking right into who I am as a person in him, not anything else, not anything else that I'm worried about or who I think I am or who other people tell me I am. He's loving me and looking at me. Even when I'm confused, I feel like he meets me in the longing because I do feel a sense of peace. Um, it's more than just a feeling. I think when you have the Holy Spirit in you, it is a supernatural, divine encounter. Uh, and it's a trust that he is meeting you there in the longing. As humans living on earth, I feel like we always want more things, but if you can put those aside and allow yourself to just rest in that Jesus is enough, it is fulfilling, yeah. Has he been enough? He's been more than enough. <laughs> He's everything. Yeah, I can't imagine how people do this life without him. It's crazy. Yeah, he is enough. So a mumser is an outsider, a person that you wouldn't think belongs at church. We wouldn't think looks comfortable at church. They might come into the church and sit in the back or, you know, come late, leave early. Someone who doesn't necessarily have a lot of friends is walking on the outside of the hallway hood up a lot of the time doesn't really want to talk to people and no one really talks to them because they don't consider them worthy of talking to or um, like they even matter really <laughs> i'll describe it as me <laughs> i moved here again when in a family that everybody was white everybody was different from what i had to like how i behave how what i knew was right or what i knew was normal for me so I get into a family that, like, as being the outcast that brought something that was totally new. I felt like a momser. I've, even in close friend groups, they've, I make a mistake and they've said, oh, you're a Christian, you shouldn't sin, you should be perfect. You know, thinking about how, uh, how one helps someone who, who feels like an outcast, they, they have those feelings. Sometimes it's surprising. It's people that you don't expect. They're very successful and yet, you know, they really have that loneliness inside. I was a mumser and Jesus found me when I was a mumser. And I know that Jesus wants to reach every person. Um, and you can't have Christians without people who are first mumsers. <laughs> Christians are former mumsers. Um, and so, I see God's heart for each person, and I see the role and the responsibility and the honor that he's given me and all believers to go out and make disciples or to go out and, and meet the mumsers where they are and bring them into the kingdom. Watching Jesus' ex example with that, um, it's really hard for me almost because I'm like, shoot, I can't love people unless I move toward them. Like, I can't just like pray from afar for this person and hope that they find the Lord. Like, I have to, I have to step into that with them. So that looks like, for me, <laughs> that looks like maybe stepping away from my group of friends or the people that I'm comfortable with and moving into a conversation that might be a little bit uncomfortable at first. Um, and talking to that person that's on the outside of the hallway. Because when you're in that position, and you feel like you're on the outside, you don't need someone to just look at you like you're less than. You need someone to move toward you, even though sometimes you might not necessarily ask for that. That's what needs to happen, and that's what love is. Love is moving towards someone, and that's something that I've learned from Jesus' example. As I seek to go out and reach my neighbors and my friends, how does the kingdom of God allow me to do that and I think it gives me a boldness it gives me um, some bravery to you know as Phil said like raise the flag or just you know just put it out there like with a neighbor I'll, I might be setting up something for the kids but then mention that we're at church or that we you know believe that like this connection was from God because Jack had been looking for a friend and suddenly we have this friendship. So um, I just think that, yeah, as, as, we, as I think about the kingdom in me, I think it allows me to be brave and, and to kind of put it out there for others that might not have any experience with the kingdom of God. We're not called to stay comfortable. It'd be easy to just stay comfortable in our, uh, with our friends that think alike. 
Um, and so one of the things that I've been watching other people do well is the idea of just asking, uh, tell me, help me understand your position on something or help me understand what, and moving towards people with kind of an openness to listen to them instead of judging them. Ever since I became a Christian, the Lord's love has flowed through me to Him by helping Him read the Bible, by helping Him know that there is someone there, even if there is no one to talk to. For me, the tension of faith is not leaning on my strength, but trusting in God's because He's ultimately the one that can fulfill anything that I need, and I will fail because I'm human. So that's my tension, I think. When I picture myself sitting next to God, I feel so much in peace. My heart feels full of joy. Sometimes even I, my tears come out of my eyes because I'm talking to Him in such a way that just gives me peace. Like when I became a Christian, it was hard for me to even look in the mirror uh, because I would be in such pain and such suffering and like I would see things that I didn't want to see when I looked in my eyes and they looked back at me. Um, and I really, I know this is cheesy, but I really believe the eyes are the window to the soul and through my past five years and through my time spent with the Lord and the past year and a half-ish of reading my Bible every single, consistently, every single day, um, the Lord has put back together pieces of myself that I didn't even know were missing and that I didn't even know had split apart um, and that I didn't know were broken. Um, so now when I look in the mirror, <laughs> I see a Jesus um, who loves me so much and I don't necessarily see as much the things that I used to see, the things that were broken, the things that were sad and anxious and depressed and missing him. Um, he's put them back together, I'd say, and he, he keeps on doing that every single day. Jesus is in our longing. He's in our brokenness. He's in the depths of our pain. And of course, he's also in our victories and our successes, and he celebrates with us in those milestones. But I think that's the easy part to remember. I think when our life is really good, we can easily pinpoint where God is and how he's orchestrating everything. And where it's harder sometimes for people to see him is when we are suffering and grieving, when we feel isolated and alone, but he is there. Some advice is just to really to lean in to that relationship with him because you'll never see anything sweeter than what Jesus is gonna be in your life. You'll never see anything sweeter than that. And um, I'm still learning that every single day <laughs> because every single day I, I push away from him and he pulls me back and puts me back together. <laughs> um, yeah. So, you know, when you think about moving out to the, the outcasts, the moms are, it's really a little thing. And, and um, he did it out of love. And so if we're gonna reflect him, we need to do it out of love as well. Just lay it all down, right? <laughs> I think there's a song about lay it all down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>